gave up. The blinding of the magician kind of freaked him out. But he learned from Peter and Paul that the power of Jesus, as far as that's concerned, that's just the tip of the iceberg. And he was going to see so many great things. And when, you, when Brother Ronnie's preaching through the Gospel of Mark here lately, you saw the power of Jesus Christ. It was amazing. It really formed Mark's thoughts. He was a great defender of the faith. What can we gain from this? That even if we've cowered away in the past, we can still be used for great and wonderful things. Mark went from failure to follower. Our third failure is Demas. Now Demas has been called a lot of different things. John MacArthur says that, that Jesus had his Judas and Paul had his Demas. Kind of gives them the idea. But one thing about this boy, just like the other two boys, he went AWOL. He ran away. It's funny how people who follow Jesus and they run into some kind of problems, whether it be a person, somebody who's standing in their way, some sort of stumbling block, and they give up and they disappear. That's not the way my daddy taught me. Is it yours? My father tells me to keep moving, to keep going. But that's what happens. Demas had served God. But Paul says in 2 Timothy 4.10, Demas in love with this present world has deserted me and gone to Thessalonica. He left Paul. But at this time of this letter, he was there. He was in the thick of it. He was serving. His name means governor of the people. And I think he went back to the people. He loved the world. James says in James 4.4 4, that the love of the world is enmity with God. Loving the world makes you God's enemy is what that's saying. When a person who is unregenerate hears God's word on a daily basis, sooner or later they are going to have to wash that makeup off of the hypocrite and see who they really and truly are. Now, maybe you think Demas was a, a real re regenerate Christian and he fell into the world, but I believe Jesus had something to say about that. He said that there's four kinds of soil. And there's one kind of soil that gladly accepts and they have, they have just their overwhelmingly growth and they want to produce fruit, but the cares of the world come up and choke them out until they perish. That's Demas. He wanted and wanted to serve the Lord, but you can't serve the Lord without the Lord. You can't serve God without God inside of you. He left the cause. Now, there's little, deep, little doubt that Demas was a disciple. He knew how to work. He knew what to do. But he wasn't a follower. He wasn't a Christian. He worked, he gave, he led, finally he left. Jesus told us about this, the soil, and Demas really fits that exact, that exact description. He seemed to be a follower of Christ. He was well known by Paul, but the world called him back. Now, the letter to the, uh, the Colossian church tells us so much more when you see what these guys are made of. You see the people who, are, who was there with Paul. You see 72% of the New Testament written by the people who are there at the prison with Paul. And I'll be honest, I think Paul was the only one actually locked up in prison. I think the other ones were just there. And we can learn something. You know, Onesimus came, had some confessions to make. He had to go back to Philemon and make things right. And Paul had written him a letter to his master in order to get him restored. He went from slave to free and now he's going to go back from free to slave in the hopes that he could be free from slavery. God didn't promise us apple pie in the sky by and by. He didn't promise us a nice easy road. He, he wanted us to be faithful. And that's what Onesimus is, has to do. He needs to get right with his master in order to get right with the master. Well, Mark 
had left the cause when the going got tough. He apparently had left his cousin Barnabas holding the weight of the ministry. I'm sure Barnabas just loved Mark. I bet he went up, Mark, or Barnabas went up and said, Paul, I want, I want John Mark to go with us, but I'm not sure he'll hang in there. Always in the back of his mind. And Mark really hurt Barnabas. And he really hurt Paul. But he came back. He came back to write the gospel of Mark. Demas started off strong, made an impression on Paul and others in this snapshot from this Roman prison, but the world happened. The world drug him back in. You know, you think about it, see how it helps us in the world and gives, us, gives in to demands. The world asks us all the time to lay down one more of our convictions and they'll give us something. You see it today more than ever before. Don't worry about that and you'll be better in society. We can't do that anymore. We've got to make a stand. As Paul said to the the Romans, chapter 12, verse 1, Do not be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Don't let the world drag you down. Well, maybe you can see yourself in one of these guys tonight. Maybe you you are a slave and... You've been set free, but you've got something else that's holding you on. It won't let you go. And God wants you to bring that to Him. Maybe you're like Mark. You're a coward. And you've been under the teaching of some great great teachers. You've been under mentorship of great mentors. And there's a time where you've got to say, I'm tired of being a coward. It's time for me to make a stand for Jesus Christ. Maybe that's you. Maybe you're like Demas. Yeah, you put on the good face. You put on the makeup. You put on the service. But you really, aren't, you really aren't a follower of Christ. You've been faking it. I told you the book that's really astounded me lately. Up to 60% of church members are lost. I don't agree or disagree. But I do know that there's enough fighting and quarreling in the church to make that so. So what are you doing tonight? How is your walk with Jesus Christ? Would you pray with me? Our Father, as we bow in your presence, we're grateful for the time that we have here. I thank you for...